I love to talk, film, discuss, to critique. is up people what's going on welcome back to blood splatter chatter live we are doing another film review tonight a horror film review last week we did brandon cronenberg's possessor and this week we do his father's first feature film shivers from 1975 that's the canadian release date 1976 here in america let's bring in we got a couple of my favorite people to talk about this movie with and we'll bring in the first one right here it's missing link What's up, brother? <laughs> I, I love the reaction. You're like, oh, oh, am I on a show? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Looking good, man. The mustache. I saw it on Scar Pad. I was like, thank, like Scar Pad <laughs> is fucking stepping it up tonight, man. With the mustache. Try it. <laughs> Little something, something. I wasn't sure if to get, you know. I'm trying. I was experimenting still. I was like, should I keep the soul patch? To you know, because I'll get there eventually. But I want the 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 prominent stash, you know. So I'll probably with, get it. with the. And then it's debatable with the soul stash. We got another guy, man. He broke out his fancy fucking shirt tonight, too. We got Mr. Fable in the house. Thank you. Everybody looking flashy <laughs> and colorful. What is up, my friend? Um, uh, okay, oh. Fable, I know you're a big Cronenberg fan. You picked The Fly and The Fly 2, which we're doing this Saturday on Dylan's Horror Show, which I'm super excited to talk about with you guys and the rest of the crew. Uh, I know, So I know you're a big fan of Mr. Cronenberg. Link, I, I assume... You're at least a fan of The Fly. How familiar are you with his work? And you had not seen Shivers, correct? No, I haven't. Uh, first time. I don't think I've even heard of it. I'm familiar with Cronenberg, but I wouldn't say, like, I've seen all his work. Um, I think Videodrome, was that Cronenberg? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I, that was my first time seeing it like, last year when I did it for Robbie's Dream. Uh, the Fly is probably the only thing I've seen multiple times. Right. That, you know, so, yeah. I know of him, but I haven't seen a lot of his work, should I say. Same here up until like a, a year and a half ago, until I dove into I I said it before, but I'll say it again. I was on the Dead Zone stream with Dylan and Robbie, and they kept on throwing around this name Cronenberg. I'm just like nodding and shit. Like, yeah, I know what you're <laughs> but eventually I had to be like, hey, who is this Cronenberg that you're talking about? But uh, so uh, you said you had seen this before in the past, right, Fable? Oh, uh, this one, no. No, I like Link. I, I haven't heard of this one. Okay, all That's right, all right. This, yeah. I thought you said you'd, you'd seen it a while ago. All right, well, cool, man. And this is even more exciting. This is one that I'm I'm always curious to find out what people are going to think about the movie, but I'm. it could go a lot of ways on this. You guys can tell me by the end of this that you're, you're going to love the shit out of it or that you hated it, and I would kind of get either way, I guess. But uh, just so people know, tuning in for the first time, how we do it here, on the blood splatter chatter we're going to do just a little quick background info and then we will get into the plot and we will walk through the plot in a spoilery fashion and then afterwards we will review and we will give the film a letter grade which i noticed over on scar pads domain <laughs> seems to be the new thing i got issues which i gotta say <laughs> is, uh, it's flattering it's very flattering <laughs> but a uh, little bit of background information on this one i'm gonna i'm gonna read this because i saw this is a good description so this is a tale of a parasite that spreads through a montreal high-rise turning residents into sex crazed zombies so as i said written and directed by cronenberg he had a few uh underground films i guess you would say he calls this his first commercial film so right. he'd done a couple full-length films but this is the first one where people were basically where people were getting paid the other ones were just his friends and nobody was making any money off it <laughs> he has been titled and i've never heard of either of these but i thought they were funny as the baron of blood which seems like that's something that like a million people are called but this one i like the king of venereal horror which it's like mm. yeah especially after this one i don't know if you guys have seen rabid but rabid came out a few years after this and it's got a very similar vibe where it's like it feels like a sexually transmitted disease. And it's just like a hyper violent, hyper sexual movie. But mm. the other thing, this had a budget of one hundred eighty thousand dollars and a box office of five million dollars. Mm. And kind of 
the interesting thing about this movie, it was distributed or, or the production company was Cinepex, Cinepix, which was a Canadian like porn uh, production company. Pretty much, they made like well, I guess you'd call like elevated porn. They were like the A twenty four of Canadian skin flicks, uh, Showtime <laughs> type of stuff, yeah, you know, soft core. So, Cronenberg went to them with the idea for the film because he didn't. He basically decided early on like he does not want to be a Hollywood guy. He planted himself in Canada, and this is something I didn't know about him. I just figured he got his start in Canada, and then most of his movies were made in the states. But I think only one of his films was actually shot here, and the rest of it, almost all of it, was shot in either Montreal or uh, or Ottawa. So this, that was kind of an interesting thing. So, anyways, Cinepix. Gave them the money for the film. They, they put it up, and it did really good. And then there was this uh, article written by some Canadian writer, and he was basically saying, it went something like, Canadians, you should know how terrible this film is because you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> they actually got profit for all that. But it was kind of important because, as I said, he put this out in 75. Rabbit didn't come out in 79, and it's because... Cinepix was being funded by the Canadian government. And the government, after this article came out, they got afraid. People were coming after them like, why are you funding this type of film? You're the government, blah, blah, blah. So it really put a halt on Cronenberg's career, and it almost sent him to Hollywood. So he ended wow. up them battling it, and it ended up, Cinepix came out, or uh, the Canadian government ended up coming out and being like, we're going to support all art, no matter what like people think of it. They did rabbit, and then Cinepix eventually became what's today is Lionsgate. Oh. What? So he kind of No way. He, and this is the biggest thing that Canada had ever done film wise at the time. It was the most profitable Canadian film. So it really it was kind of a big deal in Canada at the time and it had a, a fairly big legacy as far as that goes with leading into Lions. Yeah, you said this made five million dollars. I feel like that was a lot for the the time it was released. That's kind of crazy to me. Uh, right. what year was it? So like 75 uh, in Canada, 76 here. Yeah, that's oh, a lot of money for, for 75. It has a, a Rotten Tomato score of 85%, an IMDb score of 6.4. For some, for some reason, I could not find a Google user score. And this is an interesting bit. I was going to ask you what your favorite title is, what your guys' favorite title, because it's called Shivers here in the United States. It would, The original U.S. name, they changed it to They Came From Within, which I think is kind of cool. Mm. Um, it, Cronenberg's original title was going to be Orgy of the Blood Parasites, which <laughs> sounds like an early 70s. That sound, yeah. Kid, you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. typical of that. So there, And then the other <laughs> one is uh, The Parasite Murders, and then in, in uh, French Canada, it's called Frizzins, which is where they got the name Shivers. So again, there's They Came From Within, Orgy of the Blood Parasites, The Parasite Murders, and Shivers. So what, if you guys had to pick a title, what would you pick out of that? Or unless you could pull one out of your ass right now that you want to invent up the spot, feel free to do that too. Uh, I don't feel like any room really nail it to the feel <laughs> of the movie, but they came from within is probably the one I would go with because it's got the most intrigue. Like Shivers is kind of goofy to me. I don't really get it. I mean, maybe yeah. that's the name of the disease, but I don't know. It's not a strong tie-in. Uh Orgy, like you said, orgy of the blood parasite, or would that does it sounds cool, but it would be indicative of like those early grindhouse exploitation right. type of films. Maybe that's what he was going for in his own sense. I don't know, but I, I, they came from within. I'd go with that one. I like it too. I mean, Shivers has a, a good ring to it now, but you're right. Yeah. Like, what the hell does this mean? That was just some uh, the American distributor. They came up with that evidently based. Frisian on- sounds cooler than right. Shiver. You know they should have just kept Frisians. Yeah. What about you, Fable? You what do you, what do you go with? Yeah, I'll probably go with what they came from within. They they all they all pretty bad, really. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. uh, Shivers has well, grown uh, on me, but I I get what you're saying where it doesn't fit it. Shivers is 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 a good name, but this movie has nothing to do with shivering. So, um, yeah, yeah, they all pretty bad for this movie, but yeah, right. they came from within would probably be the most fitting title, but it's still not that great. Right. Yeah. It's funny. The parasite murder sounds a lot like, uh, the babysitter murders. Yeah. And I, I really, <laughs> the popularity of, uh, the Manson murders at the time, that was such mm. a big deal. That was like such a 
uh, basis for fear in the country mm. or in the, in the continent sure. at the time that it was mm. like, I feel like that's where that came it, from. It, if they didn't have the title before 75, then Parasite would have probably been the title. Right. Right? right. Parasite, yeah. Parasite. yeah. The... Sex Parasite, if you want to. Sex Parasite, yeah. yeah. I like, I like <laughs> Scarpe. <laughs> Sex Love. Sex Love. Hey, so. go. we, got, we got Slick Dick in the house, my buddy, going to be joining us uh, either next week or the week after when we talk about a quiet place getting the most uh, the nicest, most anti guy that you would think would appear on a horror show in the history of YouTube <laughs> to come and join us. I'm super excited about it. Next to the best. That's going to be fun. What do you say? Came for the movie review, stayed for the sexy panel. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's how we get him. This guy over here. <laughs> that is how we get him. All right. So let's get into this thing, man. As I said, we're going to run through the plot. This one's going to be a little bit weird. You guys are going to see this is going to be a truncated plot rundown because the nature of this movie, it's basically just a, uh, this high rise gets infected with this parasite. And then I don't know about your guys' opinion, but I find it to be like escalating craziness and violence and sexual attacks that happen till the end of the movie. But uh, it does begin with a pretty wild and violent scene, which is very reminiscent of the Brandon Cronenberg movie, his son that we just talked about last week, where mm. me, the first time I saw this, like, holy shit, this is very violent and very sexual. And like, it kind of gives you like rapey vibes, makes you yeah. uncomfortable for sure. But in my case, it grabbed my attention and made me, you know, kind of pay attention to the movie a little bit more. So I'm curious, like, for you guys, two things. Like, what did you feel about the opening scene? And just, you know, the disturbingness of it. Was it cool? Was it dated? And then also the, the reason why I bring up datedness is because, to me, instantly right away, it starts with this slideshow. Before this, this scene that I'm talking about, it's, it's a slideshow yeah. and this voiceover talking about Starline uh, Towers and blah, 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 all this. And to me, like... First time I put on the movie, I was like, oh, I might just turn this right the fuck off right now. Because it's like, that was really dated. And then there's some weird acting with this bellboy. And I was like, oh, boy, did you guys feel the datedness? And did you like me? Like, did it did you did you kind of grow used to it as the movie went? Did it seem less dated the rest of the movie than the first fucking few minutes did to you guys? Like, I'll go to you first. Uh, um. I did feel it's datedness. Me and Faye were actually talking about this a little earlier uh, in just terms of the acting and it being very theatrical. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, Fable said that, you know, there was a turn in cinema around like early 80s where there was more naturalism, you know, and th th it seemed like these are actual conversations people have in real life and stuff, stuff happening in movies. But, it, you know, I've seen too much to let it really bother me. Mm -hmm. You know, I can watch almost anything, but it was mm -hmm. noticeable. Uh, it, to me, this wasn't indicative of the Brandon Cronenberg that I've heard about, you know, from like his later films. Yeah. Um, there's hints there, but this, I wouldn't say, like, I see this was like his signature style in this one. Right, as far as like the the look of, or the the thematic, because of the thematic stuff, it's like there's a portion of his career before he like left horror that I feel like like thematically, just like with the venereal disease part of it, it's very indicative of his shit. But then again, I don't know. Like, what's what's his newer? Bit? I should have said this up front. What has he done? I know you'll know. We were just talking about it not long ago. History of Violence was one of them. Yes, Viggo Mortensen and, and a few others. There, like I've seen that movie, but it was it, I saw it when it came out. And from what I understand, like he's moved on to doing dramas. He's done some gangster films, and he's left this portion of his so, career but, behind. So I feel like you're more yeah. familiar with his newer shit. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like The Fly and Up is pretty much, and before last year, Video Drum. I think Video Drum came out after The Fly. Right, but um, and it's uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, ooh, actually, I don't fucking know. No, it was I think it's before. Yeah, Is it? I think okay. The drone was before, okay. yeah. Okay, so yeah, I saw it later. But yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I guess, you know, even looking at the fly and um, history of violence, they're the themes of like sex and violence, you know, mm -hmm. not to be too on the nose, are very prevalent in both of those films. Oh, and not so much the fly is not violent. It's violent in a, a weird intimate way like you know with right. within oneself but yeah I, I guess i would say like i'm not i don't know i always thought kind of 
thought he was like more of a there is the hints of like the body horror and stuff going on throughout the movie the pulse in the stomach and the slugs mm-hmm. in the tongues and stuff but I don't know. It didn't feel like the other things I've, his, I guess his later works, you know, people become more refined. This is his first right. film. Right, right, right. But, well, you know. It's the same thing with the acting, too. He gets better choice. Well, he gets, one yeah. thing he talks about a lot in the special features is he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And the, Cinepix did not want him to be the director of this film. They, he wanted to make this film in 72. For three years, they tried to buy this script from him and not get him to direct it. And wow. he fought his way to get to direct it. He held his own. And then once he got there, they just set him up with producers, cinematographers, and other people that did know what they were doing. And he's pretty open about it, being like, I didn't know what I was doing, and I just took the advice from everyone. And his last mm. thought, they were spending so much time on, we got to figure out how to shoot this and get these uh, special effects to look good. And then his last thought would be like, oh, fuck, there's actors involved. And that was kind of like he said he had really no idea at this point in his career. I mean, I think it shows like with the. Material. No, yeah, that that kind of t- it doesn't feel totally him. Like, you know, it feels, you know, it, what is his first film? So it, there's an amateurish totally feel to it compared to what I've seen his later works for. Totally. Well, wait, what but not bad. Not as bad. far as like the same thing, like was it overly dated for you? I'm sure it's the same thing. Like at this point, we all. We don't see a dated movie and be like, "Oh, this is shit." We're all used to it. But was it <laughs> was it dated enough that it was affecting your viewing experience? Fable. Me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought he was doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No, this movie definitely is dated in so many ways. Um, acting, cinematography, sound. It's, 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 uh, a lot of it is dated, but no, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm a film lover. Uh, I kind of try to always put myself in the era of which a film is made. Um, uh, but like Steph said, this does come off a little amateurish at times, mm-hmm. especially in the acting department, because, you know, the, these guys are delivering some of these lines so dry, especially the mm-hmm. main character. He's supposed yeah. to be like a little more charismatic, in my opinion. Um, but regardless, um it, 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 it didn't bother me, but yes, it does look dated. And um, as far as you said to talk about the uh, beginning scene, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, attack. my bad. I forget about that. It's not your bad. It's me um, asking three questions at once and expecting you guys to know. <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> um, I'm always disturbed by uh, rape in any form, mm-hmm. any movie, anything. It, it'll always bother me. Um, so I tend, to, I tend to stay away from movies that have overly... You know, that kind yeah, of thing. Aggressive. Um, that being said, um, I think some of it was the point of this movie, mm-hmm. right? Like it had to be shown in order for you to get the thematics. Because I don't know if we all got the same themes from it, but uh, I kind of got it like a, like a, it's, it's funny you say that it was a porn uh, thing that funded this because right. to me this is like a movie that's like saying sexual depravity invading you know uh fine up kind of society citizens yeah, yeah. like like hmm. if it's almost like um and then funny when you say canada right right so it feels like it feels like that to me like like they're trying to say like maybe i'm not saying americans but like you know uh violent sex like you say and um also it, it's a cronenberg thing like lincoln alluded to earlier he said uh is an attractiveness to the disgusting or attractiveness to the the you know deprived stuff and he even references it a couple of times with, like with the old guy getting checked up you know what i'm saying if you notice right. the lines he says there mm-hmm. yeah well oh, here, here's the thing like like yeah. that this is one thing i guess we can get into right here what are the rules of this parasite? How does it affect people? So, and what it appears to be is it affects everybody differently. Like that old guy that you're talking about, that he's getting chopped up for the doctor. He's not crazy sexed out zombie guy just yet, mm-hmm. but he does have this parasite in him. But he is being weirdly sexual. Just didn't like, oh, this old man maybe had hedonistic. a couple too many drinks. But I think that's, I think that's the shivers. I think that's what's making him be a little bit creepy and pervy. And then the other thing I wanted to point out was like that opening scene. It feels like like it feels rapey. Like I get like it's it's designed to make you uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. 
But as we'll learn as the story goes, we'll just go ahead and I'll just say it now, is it's not like it's not a rape. It looks sexual. But yeah, it, yeah, it came yeah. more about like why this guy is doing the violent act in just in just a little bit here. But I think it's designed to make you think something's happening that isn't happening, and then you find out later it's not as egregious or as like a rapey, just to use that word again. It's not as rapey as mm-hmm. it looks, but it, it fucking feels that way and it gets your attention, and it's like it's just sleazy enough to be uh I'll just say what Robbie was saying again, like it's it's boundary pushing. It's kind of it's pushing that boundary and it's getting and that's what good horror should do. It should make you feel uncomfortable. But I do agree. It is a type of movie. If I'm not going to watch this with my fiance because she has zero <laughs> power for this type of shit. She gives a shit all the time. Are you guys always watching this rapey shit? And it's just that <laughs> there's a lot of rapey movies or rapey stuff in horror movies. But I do agree. It's like it makes you feel uncomfortable in a way that it's supposed to. But it's yeah. like not my favorite kind of thing but i kind of respect it like the way it's done here i could respect it i don't think like cronenberg's trash for doing it in this scene but i could see why it would be taken in that way you know what i mean yeah well yeah like um but it is it is trope to to try to make or at least the characters seem in love with the the bizarre or the strange like you know what i mean like what i said with the old man was getting checked up um, he had mentioned, oh, yeah, she had these lumps in her stomach. You could freaking move them around. Looks kind of sexy, if you ask me. Right, right. Right? Like, and and what that's the fuck is like wrong with you? Cronenberg, right there. <laughs> right. And this girl that he's talking about is 19 years old. This is the girl that we see in the opening scene being murdered. But uh, let me go ahead and just see if I can fuck this up right here. We tested this out last year, last week on dylan's channel i think if i press this button you guys are still gonna be able to hear me and i'll be able to talk over this little clip right here but uh, let's find out basically i'm gonna run through our cast right here and then we can kind of get into them and just talk about them just a little bit this is the guy this is dr hobbs he's the one that sets everything into motion he creates the parasite and this is this is part of that attack this dude is he's like the ticking time bomb of the film this is mr tudor and basically i look at him and he's like the first person we see get the parasite and I think he's like a super creator of these worms. And we, we can get into that in a minute. I think some people create him, but he creates more than everybody else. This is his wife, Janine, who basically her only job is to cry throughout the entire film. <laughs> and there's a little anecdote behind this. This guy, I guess, is the main character. It's kind of fucking weird. This is Dr. Roger St. Luke. And he is our final boy at the end, but he's very much a dick. This woman here, this is Nurse uh, Forsyth. She has the most iconic moments in the film the most iconic lines she's the person that people remember this is barbara Steele. she is a major 60s italian gothic horror scream queen she's like a big ass deal in italian horror especially in the early stuff she was in mario baba's black sunday and this fucking guy is my favorite part of the movie for whatever reason he is the doctor that we meet at the beginning this is his assistant so he basically plays the role of the, he's the exposition guy. We meet him a couple times. He explains to us what's going on, what this parasite is all about. And before I ask you guys, everything you guys already spoke about the cast, I don't want to say there's that all of these are bad. Some of these are fucking great actors, I think. There's some shit acting mixed in, like especially yeah. with some yeah. of the, the other characters. There's some more theatrical acting like you guys were talking about earlier more stagey less modern uh you know real realistic acting but the thing that this cast has going for it in spades in my opinion is the look they got a good fucking look that guy that's doing the rapey bit at the beginning that face is perfect for that scene the <laughs> tutor guy with the curly hair the one that's talking to the shiver in his stomach the whole time he's just got a memorable like interesting face and then What's her name? The nurse, Lynn Lowry. She's like this gorgeous supermodel that if you looked at her right, you'd think she wasn't good looking at all. She's one of those like exotic <laughs> beauty. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? She's a, she she's looked like incredible a gelfling looking woman. Me. She looked what? <laughs> like a gelfling. You ever seen Dark Crystal? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, totally, dude, totally. Yeah, she's it's she's got a wild look. But what did you guys think? Were you, were you guys less impressed? with them that I, I know you already commented on the acting, but like, did you, were you impressed with the look of the cast or anything? The, the nurse, yeah, she did yeah. stand out. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I did catch myself saying, well, at least she was fun eye candy. 
um the whole kissing bit well, can i kiss and he's just not she's like not interested in her i thought that was funny <laughs> they but, didn't get along on set by the way everybody hated that lead guy everybody that i've heard like in an interview they did not like the blonde doctor in this movie wow but then i've heard a couple of them say like they didn't get like his performance at the time but then when they watched the movie afterwards they were like oh that's what he was doing like he's just acting aloof and kind of like a dick but i guess that's the role that he Went with maybe it was the role that was written. method acting. It's a weird choice for a lead actor because you never relate to that guy for a second, and then at yeah. the end, he's he's your guy. I don't find myself relating to any of the characters, but I do find myself enjoying this cast if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? What about you, Fable? Uh, what was the question again? Just like what what do you think of the cast as a whole? Was there was there any of them that stood um, out to you? Uh, well, yeah, the guy that you said you like the best the um the, ex- scientist the glasses the friend. Yeah. yeah he's the most charismatic totally. he's the most natural actor he's in rabbit too by the way yeah. yeah and um i hated to see him go man I, I didn't like that scene um where where he died you know he bought it uh, he just walked into a trap basically but um i guess that the the other guy you said the, the one the super worm carrier he he reminded me of David Schwimmer, man. I couldn't get that totally, out of my head. man. All the time I was watching, I was telling Link. I said, "Why is why is Ross from Friends in this movie? How the hell did that happen?" <laughs> Big time, dude. Um, but I didn't really like him either. He just had an interesting look, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. an interesting look. Um, so yeah, everybody has an interesting look. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But um, acting, yeah. Eh. Probably the nurse yes. and the scientist, yeah. yeah. Probably were the best. There's something about his delivery where he's just the the scientist guy, where he seems like he's out of a different movie. He seems so because it's so casual. Yeah, like, right. He, everyone else is very over dramatic at times, yeah. and he's just very natural. Mm-hmm. Like we're, you know, seems more believable. Totally. Right. Yeah. No, he he's the best part of it, dude. Like it's it's funny, man. I, in full uh, disclosure, I've watched this movie in the past couple months way more fucking times than you guys even need to know <laughs> something about it like i i just i've put i keep putting on when it was on tubi i bought this which anybody if you're a uh, slightly a fan of this movie this is a fucking great buy comes with a slip i just got it on amazon with the slip it's 11 dollars. it's got two commentaries two interviews with david cronenberg an interview with a large portion of the cast it's a fucking great buy but I've watched this movie like five times in the past couple of months. So like to me, like I feel like I get I get everything you guys are saying, but I've just watched it so many times that I've grown to fucking know these characters nope. more than I probably yeah. should. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I appreciate their look and what, what they bring to the film to a uh, to probably a larger degree than I should. What did you guys think the second part of the film, the, the second act, basically, I'll call it, which is a weird structured film. Because there's not like, oh, this happens, and then it affects the movie in this way, and then there's this twisted turn. It's just a series of, oh, the this one person gets infected. We see him puke over this balcony, which is a pretty funny moment. Uh, <laughs> shitty, shitty looking slither thing comes down, lands on these old ladies' umbrella, which they're great. They were just some ladies they grabbed off the streets of Canada, by the way. And, oh, wow. Uh, threw them in the film. A lot of these people are. The woman down in the laundry room that gets attacked by this thing in a pretty mm. another pretty cheesy moment. She's some rando from the streets. But that's what it is. There's a series of these events. And throughout the course of the second act, you start to realize, like, the whole high-rise is being taken over by these sex-crazed zombies, pretty much. And there's all these different bits, a lot of special effects moments. And it, in my opinion, it does a good job of like ramping the movie up to where it's like, you do start to feel like, Oh damn, this is getting out of control. Like, Oh damn, this is out of control. Like, Oh fuck. This is crazy. Like by the end of the movie, it's like larger than the high rise itself. And it, it, you don't know how big it could go. So I, I personally, I enjoy the, the second act and all the bits and a lot of the practical effects and the pacing of it. So I guess those are the two things. Cause you could watch this movie and you could think it was slow, and I would totally get that. But to me, there's enough bits in it that keep me entertained throughout that whole second act that leads up to the finale of the swimming pool. What did you guys think? Uh, I'll start with you, Fable. Did you have what did you think of the pacing of the second act? Do you do you disagree? Was it too slow for you? Was was there any standout moments for you and with all the bits and all the attacks from the shivers? Um, 
Yeah, no, totally. It ramps up at the end. It just starts getting more escalated. More people are getting infected. They're all grouping up. They're all coming from every angle. It's kind of hard to escape. And they do. A, I think they do a pretty good job of of portraying that, you know, showing that off. Um, mm-hmm. And the standout bit to me, the, to me the best bit was the pool scene uh, because – well, let's uh, not get to that iconic. yet. Hold on, everything up until well, that. Oh, uh, well. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he said best bit. So I would say that, um, you know, particularly some of the shots in that that uh, scene, especially when he's going up the hill. I think that's. Uh, right. I don't know if you want me to talk about that, but yeah, no, that's going fine. up the hill. Yeah, when they're coming out of the dark and he runs left. That's right, the iconic and right bit. back into the building. Yeah, I feel like I'm like half slow. Like the first time I watch this movie, after watching it the second time, well, I'll just say the first time I watched the movie, that was the moment that I'm like, oh fuck, is this a zombie movie? But it's like watching it again, it's like oh, I should have picked up on that maybe about 20 minutes earlier. But that is the the part where they're like, oh, like there's a couple of them that are walking like zombies. And for, did you guys? I'll ask you guys that. Like. Were you guys picking up on this was a zombie movie before that bit there? And do you even think this is a zombie movie? Either one of you. I got hints of like a zombie type vibes, but this was just later on in the movie, like when the old folks are in the doctor's girlfriend. This is like when she's running down the hall and it shows just like the camera first person mode, like running downstairs. That was pretty dope, by the way. And she leaves the old people in there, but they get off the phone with the doctor and he's like, stay in your room. And they're like, okay. And then these people come start banging on the door. And I was like, that gave me zombie vibes, but I guess that was more towards in the third act. Um, second act, I guess. the. No, I mean, I'm calling all that second act. Basically what I was okay. saying is all of the fucking bits that you get up into the finale of the swimming pool is what I was talking about. Just the different, okay. any of those stand out. Well, yes, the nurse when she has her moment uh, getting <laughs> getting ready, but just for no um, reason, she just takes her clothes yeah. off. We're getting exposition <laughs> about how this parasite works, and she's just changing her clothes that keep on flashing to her. And you're like, hey, "Thank <laughs> and you." And this is before this is before she gets infected. Yeah, <laughs> it's already yeah. sex crazy. Right, <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't know if I would classify this as a zombie film. Uh, I get it. If someone were to, that you could, it's very debatable, but I personally mm-hmm. wouldn't classify this as a zombie film. I, why? I get it. And I, I kind of, it's because it they don't die. Not only that, like, I, I, they were, I don't know. I guess I'm always thinking of the zombies as the undead, yes, but there were, I, I've seen, like, I don't really count stuff like that. I look at it more of in the vein of, like, the crazies. You know, mm-hmm. people just kind mm-hmm. of going that shit out of their mind and just, right. you know, innately humans have like a wolf pack mentality. So it's like, you know, if they went crazy, even that subconscious will pull through where people are forming packs to attack other people, you know, attacking in groups and being violent. So I guess, you know, it could be debated as a zombie movie, but right. I could, if you were to advertise this as a zombie movie or something like this and someone goes in there thinking they're going to see a zombie movie, you'd get a lot of pissed off folk because it's not, <laughs> right. you're clear. Like I said, it's debatable, but right. it's my opinion. I wouldn't, I, I'm but I get it. If what, it like what, what Cronenberg would say. Cause I don't, like, they never say zombies. It's not. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I get it. Like what I think of zombies, I think of, they died, they got bit. And that's what turned into a zombie, which you could say, ah, close right. enough. They get, some bodily fluids they get a, they get kissed in this and they become a zombie more or less but they don't like he's got people coming up to his door infected we'll call them coming up to his door like hey mm. come out and hang out with us and stuff that's not <laughs> zombie like that's not a zombie so right it's right. i think that's one of the things that kind of is a credit to the film is that yeah it's got some night of the living dead vibes but it's definitely doing something different with it. Different, like, yeah. Extremely different. It's it's yeah. it's comparable in, in certain ways, especially visually. But he really took that idea and, and twisted it. What about you, Fable? Would you say it's not a zombie movie, Fable, or kind of in between? Uh, yeah, I'm in between, I think, because, they, uh, you know, zombie doesn't necessarily imply the undead. Mm-hmm. Like, if you right. think of like, what a zombie is, like a mindless thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. But... 
I do associate it with the undead. I mean, it's just the way I'm programmed. So, and and Link made a great point where it's like, if you said it was a zombie and people saw this, you did, de- you definitely have some people pissed off because totally. I guess a lot of people would associate them with the undead. Um, and I would say no, also because, um, like you said, Verno, uh, the trope, uh, you know, them talking or driving or doing any kind of thinking or stuff like that is like that's not a zombie. They're like so, uh, more like yeah. hedonists, you know, free like yeah. hippies to the extreme. If anything, just doing mm-hmm. what they felt like doing. Yeah, right. Like, right. I think that kind of, I think that kind of lies in with the theme, dude. I'm not well, whatever. I'm. This is what David Cronenberg says because we've already touched on how the uh, how it ends, like the way they end up fucking leaving this high rise. I don't. I don't know if I'm jumping too far ahead, but well, whatever. Basically, our main character, he's been. <laughs> running through this place with the nurse most of the time. At one point in the movie, did you guys ever see her get infected? Because I said, I've watched this a bunch of times. I never saw her get infected. Am I tripping? But when he when he had to rescue her in the garage um, and that dude was on top of her and he shot the dude. Must have uh, got her then? Or do you see something there? You, I, you don't necessarily see any. They don't. It's not, you know. Right, right. It's the, you know. She, she, stopped, she stopped struggling, though. At a certain point, she's okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just sliding, kind of motion, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. And That's you know, crazy. even if, even if the blood splatter from his, I was thought, I was like, damn, bro, you might have shot her. Like that was kind of close range. Like mm-hmm. maybe the blood splatter from the gunshots could have gotten her mouth and, right, well, so, you know, some. Basically, the, like we said, there's all this, all this crazy shit in the, in the second act. It leads to where it's just these two, more or less. They're running around. They're trying to get out. They're in the car. They're trying to get out of the place, and they're they're trapped in there. She gives this long ass speech, which has become very famous for whatever reason. It's uh, this whole dream that she had about this guy, this old guy that wanted to have sex with her, and yada yada yada. He explains to her that all flesh is erotic flesh, and mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what to make of that dream sequence or, or the whole speech that she's making. <laughs> but she makes an old speech and it's, it's entertaining. It's cool. Then she reveals that she's one of these people too. She opens up her mouth and, and she's got this worm in her mouth too. He leaves her now. And then he heads down to the pool area. And that's where this scene happens. He's trying to escape. He fucking gets out the door and he sees this hill and he's like, ah, he's got this moment where it looks like he's going to get away. He starts making it up the hill. And that's when all these walking dead ish come out. They surround them in this way. And they kind of force him back into the pool Barbara Steele grabs him, pulls him into the pool. Then his girlfriend turns around, nipples poking out. She kisses him, gives him the shivers, right? To yep. me, that's fucking iconic as hell. Like I, I love that was a great scene. That whole bit. And then the next thing you know, the, the credits are rolling, and you see all the people that you've been seeing throughout this whole movie. They're all paired up together in the pairs that they've been getting in throughout the movie. They're all in their cars. Now the nurse, mm-hmm. she's got flowers in her hair blonde doctor he's happy as shit he's she lights his cigarette and they pull Mm -hmm. out one after another to go out into the city so the movie opens with the slideshow of the starliner hotel it's like you never have to leave we've got all the amenities you could ever want kitchen gym giggity goo giggity all this shit and it's basically saying you never have to leave here stay right here and then at the end of the movie they are sexually liberated and they're Mm -hmm. ready to go out and spread the good word they're ready to go fuck the world is basically what <laughs> how, how this movie ends. So David Cronenberg says that this is a happy ending. He's he's kind of missing all the violence that's with the sexual <laughs> uh, revelation or, or revolution or whatever. But what what did you guys think of the ending of the film? Because this is the bit at the end. I'm always like, I could be like a mid on the film, and then for me personally, by the end of this film, I'm always like, it's fucking brilliant. Like I just, I've, I love it every time at the end. I think it's so cool the way it goes out. It's like, oh, that was never where I expected this movie to go, and there could be a shivers too. Maybe it's a porno mm-hmm. flick that we haven't seen, but it's the whole world is now say crazy sex zombies. But uh, where are you guys at? Like, what did you think at the end of the film of this final uh, bit? I thought it was fitting. Um, I, you know, it, it was an interesting little moment. I was kind of when they're all leaving, driving out. I'm like, oh shit, bro! Like, what? What? Like, I was just a little thrown off, but I did get the vibe that you know they're going out to 
spread it more to the population and you know the whole whole world's gonna be fucked but <laughs> it was a, it was a it was fitting the the thing about this movie that i kept thinking about while watching it is that this is right like the idea of it it would be do well for a remake i think you yeah, might not yeah. might not be as brilliant as cronenberg's but there's an idea there to make it that would probably be speak more to society today than it did back then to be right. honest i would um, love to see it i would love to see it like a full oh yeah uh, sleazy remake you know what i mean like, yeah. yeah and that's that's going to you you give put all, all the, the sexual a little in. more charisma and yeah. you make it more like character driven where it's like all these different pe- kind of people living in this tenement building and they all how they act when they get it back. yeah it would tell us remake hell no, yeah, for sure it's just, that is good thing there about you know people being addicted to pleasure and how you know too much of that you know can fuck you over as right. you know <laughs> um uh just to throw in because I've, I've kind of been jumping around quite a bit to be honest with you guys um uh just a bunch of those scenes i was gonna reel off a bunch of these scenes that i i thought were dope <laughs> in the second act here you have this elevator bit or this a uh, group of people are in an elevator. You get this guy. I think he was like working at the hotel this time, whole time, and he's got this cherry pie that he's like smashing in his hands and eating in this super creepy, fucking disturbing way. And then like there's there's a bit where this those people meet some other this guy that is uh coming to the elevator. The one guy like picks him up, slams him on the ground, and the little girl comes out and kisses the guy and like puts the shiver Ooh. in his mouth. That shit was fucking weird to me. This is something I want to ask you guys about. They made a big deal out of this in the special features that the scene, uh, Fable, you mentioned that you didn't you didn't care for this scene. You've got the the tutor guy, the guy that's had a, this shiver in his stomach the whole time. He's in bed. Dr. Linsky finds him. He goes and he peeks under the covers and basically a shiver jumps out of the dude's stomach and lands on his face. And David Cronenberg, he was at a film festival after Alien came out, they showed Shiver there, and this people came up to him and said, clearly you've ripped off everything that you know from the movie Alien. You are a thief. <laughs> He's like, it jumps out of the stomach and on the face. I know what you did. And then Cronenberg explains, like, I made this movie before Alien, and he knows for a fact <laughs> that one of the writers of Alien, Dave O'Bannon, is a f- fan of Shivers. Like He likes his film. Right. <laughs> ah. Now, okay, I, I it's been a couple years since I've seen Alien, but I I don't remember. Okay, when it jumps out of the dude's stomach in Alien, it comes out and it just runs off. It doesn't jump out of someone's stomach and onto someone's face, right? There's the face hugger that does that, but it's two separate things. You know what I mean? Like I haven't seen it in a minute, but I I I was of the mind that I was thought like that did latch onto someone's face. Yeah, but that that's when time. it comes out of the egg. The face hugger, when he originally finds him, it jumps out and it jumps on someone's face through their spacesuit and the, and the whole shebang bang. The reason oh. why I think I I remember it is because when it in Alien, when it jumps out of the stomach, it turns around and it like it always thought like, oh god, this is a little <laughs> cheesier than I remember, and then it runs <laughs> off. And it looks like extra cheesy. I'm like, oh, this is fucking a lot cheesier than I remember it. <laughs> so, but my my point is is this: I was trying to figure out. I even asked a Facebook group, anybody in the chat, if you could help me out. If you're watching on the rewind and you know this, uh, then help me out. What I'm trying to figure out, put it down in the comments below. Is is this the first movie that has a parasite coming out of someone's mouth, going into someone else, and then infecting them? Because that is like a it's become a pretty major horror trope. I was struggling to kind of find Mm. a lot of examples of that, but what I could think of off the top of my head is like James James Gunn's entire fucking career is based on this idea. He made (laughs) Slither. Slither Slither is a straight homage to this movie right here. Slither, Shiver, it's got the tub on the cover. It's, it's, It's an homage to this movie. And then in Suicide Squad... That's what happens. You got Starro coming down, sticking to people's faces, controlling them. In Peacemaker, mm-hmm. you got the butterflies going into people's mouths and controlling them. And I bet if you looked more through James Gunn's career, there's there's more of it out there. Dreamcatcher, there's a similar thing. So anybody in the chat or in the comments below, if you could tell me other movies that do this, especially any movies that came out before Shivers, where a similar kind of thing happens. Do you guys 
Can, is anything coming to your head of any movies before or after this? That Not really? before. I was uh, faculty. The slugs, you know, they were, um, they're holding one of yeah. the characters down. They're like open Night up their the mouth creeps. to let the Night of the Creeps. And, of yeah, the creeps. that's what, somebody said that on Facebook as a yeah. as something that came after. Mm-hmm. The other thing I was trying yeah, to think before, of though, is, I... are the zombie movies between Night of the Living Dead and this. There's one that's like, oh god, I forget it. It's like a long title about the morgue at Manchester Bay in '74 or something. But there's like a there's not very very many zombie movies between night of the living dead and dawn of the dead period like it's like you know what mm. i mean nobody really took the the ropes and ran with that the way that uh or just no, nobody jumped mm-hmm. in there or took it from romero but this is one of the few movies that's similar to a zombie movie that i think is good that's between the two romero flicks that i can think of you guys same boat there you guys can't think of any zombie flicks between there chat same no, not, not any earlier than this before this um <laughs> chaos in comics yes this was the cerebros once upon a time which i should probably <laughs> acknowledge at one point and just say hi everybody i was gone for like a year but i'm back and now i'm doing horror sorry <laughs> <laughs> no me yeah me neither man me neither yeah that you know that's it's a it shit if alien ripped off of it i mean, wouldn't be surprised if many others did as well right which i don't know how how true that is but there's there's two interviews with david cronenberg and the commentary and he mentions that story in all three <laughs> so I, to, believe, I believe it yeah i could see and like he like he said the writer admitting to being a fan of this movie it's like whatever they did enough right. in aliens that was their own it's like yeah you're still right getting, you're still getting, getting all the credit but it is kind of great cool. homage like yeah this inspired it a bit he says go x-men <laughs> <laughs> well i love the x-men but i don't like where the comics went after hickman left but anyway that's neither here nor there um uh, well let's get into this thing man i am i'm feeling that you guys didn't love this movie <laughs> um, i'll go ahead and start with you fable what did what did you what, give me your review then what are your overall thoughts on shivers um, we'll, we'll save the grade until we we all go uh, you want me to like say what i thought it was trying to say or something like that. Sure. No, you uh, said. I'm just saying. What are your? What are your? Like, what's your review of the film? Where you at? I on? mean, it, it's pretty. It's pretty outdated at this point, as far as you know. I mean, all around, really. Like, you know what I mean? Acting, mm-hmm. special effects, um, everything, pacing, the themes, just a lot of a lot of ways. It's outdated. Um. It's if the performances were a little better, I would say it'd be a little better for me. But it's a little boring because of the dry doctor who you see a lot of in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie also hinges on the parasite itself, and the parasite didn't look so great in my opinion. Um, and once the creature doesn't look credible to me, it kind of loses it. A little mm-hmm. bit for me, a little bit, just a little bit, because, like I said, I can put myself in that time frame and forgive it for looking as cheap as it does. It's, it's right. the thought of what's happening, right? It put yourself in that point. budget too, right? It's the point of what's happening um, that that matters more than what it looks like. But at the same time, it looks bad, you know. What I mean? right. It's like a little rubber, <laughs> nasty piece of I don't know, whatever. Um, I thought I I, I thought it was what it kind of looks like like a first film Mm -hmm. uh, from a guy that's gonna go on to do a lot more a lot better and explore his themes in a a, a more dynamic way Mm -hmm. um but there's there's signs of it here there's little things you know like i said the 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 whole thing you said the sexual revolution uh theme i i thought that's pretty good i didn't get that from this but i thought that's a a pretty good theme I, i was getting more like like I said, like an invasion of depravity, like, you know what I mean? From mm-hmm. outside influences, since they were isolated on this place and they had this wholesome community life. And then they had this like invasion of sex and violence, like you said. And 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 it showed for me in every scene because he he he, he showed, uh, what do you call it when things are, are um, not acceptable in society? What, what are they called? Taboo. Uh, taboo. taboo. Yeah. He started showing a lot of taboo stuff back to back, if you notice. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like the, the the old guy with the young lady, the kid kissing 
the, the other guy, the even the nude black lady, the out of nowhere black lady that's naked. You know what I mean? At that I'm, time, uh, seeing interracial stuff like that mm, was, was pretty. The two fucking you know kids I mean? on a leash. I think oh yeah, it looked yeah. like yeah. It, yeah. Me, that was. He, a he just tried to. He showed a lot of taboo women kissing the, the lesbianism in there. Um, Stuff like that, um, right? Stuff that uh, was more for, shocking back then for seventy five. Sure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Is what I'm saying. Like, um, but he just wasn't there, right? Mm-hmm. He just wasn't there. The 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 skill set wasn't there. The craft, the way to, you know, he just showed you it. And because we're students of film, we know what he's doing, but most people probably wouldn't. So, overall, I think it's a good first try, but it's ultimately a meh film for me. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Let me, uh, let me, before yeah. I go to you, like, I did want to ask you guys just to touch on a little bit more. I think I was more impressed with the uh, practical effects than you guys. Were you guys not? For me, there was, there was quite a few. I loved the stuff where Tudor is sitting there and he's looking the at his stomach. stomach. Thing. Yeah. He's stomach, like, come yeah. on, boy, come on, boy. And you see it poking out of his, uh, mm-hmm. his stomach and shit. When Dr. Linsky comes and he's got the, the, pliers and he's prying the shivers off his face he's covered in blood there was the when the two women are kissing barbara Steele and tudor's wife and their necks like kind of pulse it didn't you could kind of see where that was a prosthetic part but i thought it was it was a cool idea like a lot of the, yeah. the practical effects for me they were cool as shit and i think that they i'm kind of curious like because david Cronenberg didn't come up with a lot of that a lot of that was like oh i'm just gonna let the practical guy, like, he'll come up with what we're going to do and even how we're going to shoot that scene to a right. degree. And I wonder if doing this project and having a guy that was, like, pretty it, good at the practical effects, how much that influenced the rest of his career to kind of, like, would we have got the fly if he never worked with this guy on Shivers or something like that? You know what I mean? I'm just was, it's Stuff like that, to me, is kind of interesting. Were you guys less impressed with the practical effects? I wasn't not impressed, but there, you know, wasn't um, it was fine for what it was, you know, especially his first film. Uh, mm-hmm. The budget wasn't too much. I'm assuming 150000 wasn't that much for a film back then, especially it being more independent. Uh, I didn't, it was nothing that was like wowed me, but, you know, I wasn't disappointed. Right. And the, I guess the other thing is, because you're right, there's nothing that's like, holy shit, I don't ever see anything like that. But there's a lot. And it really starts to stack on top of each other. Like when I when I wrote down after the last time I watched the movie and I started taking notes on it and I'm writing down all the scenes, I'm like, I liked that a lot. Fucking fire emoji next to that scene. Fire emoji next to this one. And I'm looking at my list. I'm like, there's fucking fire everywhere. So like that, I guess that's kind of where I'm at with it. It, it builds up to where by the time the movie ends, like there's a lot of crazy shit happened in this film. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. The other the, thing. The, the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, this is I'm kind of sidetracking this a lot. Maybe you guys didn't like uh, think about this too much. I probably thought about it more than I should have. What did you guys? I'm jumping way back to before. What did you guys think Tudor's role was? The guy with the curly hair was he? Because we saw other people. The little girl, the shiver comes out of her mouth. The nurse, the shiver comes out of of, of her mouth. The way I view him, and he was like a super conductor of these worms, incubator. Right, like he had like a special yeah. purpose. In, if you guys have ever watched Rabbit, that's how it is too. Like, there's one specific, the lead character in that she is like a special person with the disease that doesn't isn't affected by it. He was affected yeah. by it, but did, is that what you guys got from him that he was like a a super worm creator or something? Yeah, I I don't think they really. I mean, I'm not entirely sure, but that, those are vibes I got. Like he was like an incubator that helps spread the shit right. a little quicker. Um, I initially thought he was going to be the main character, me to too. be honest, and so that kind of threw me off. And how he gets taken out was kind of lackluster for him to have, for the movie to have made him seem so seem so significant yeah. up until right. that point. So much screen time, yeah, right. Yeah. I agree. I I totally agree. That's I think one of the biggest flaws, the biggest flaw with the movie that's gonna keep a lot of people from being really gripped by it is the lack of a main character that we can attach ourselves to. If they rewrote this movie today, they would have Nurse Forsyth probably as the main character or Tudor, one of those two. They might be a couple yeah. together or, or something like that. The last person in this cast that I would have picked as the main character 
is the guy that ends up being the main character at the at the end. I think that's, yeah. that's the thing that hurts it the most. But uh, okay, let's go to you now, Link. What is what's your uh, overall rating on the film and thoughts? I think it was a fine first effort for a film. Um, but like we've been talking about earlier, it, it, there are elements that are amateurish, and like you know, you said he was going to. He was, it wasn't his singular vision just yet. He was, you know, he didn't really know what to do. He's kind of overwhelmed. So he let kind of people in that department do what they do. And it, you know, it shows for, for that. Not to say it's bad, but I, it's a fine first film, but not a definitive work for me for, you know, as I've right. seen later films for what I'm coming right. to know him for. But it was a fine first effort. I will say that. Hell yes. Um, like I said, man, I. I just like keep fucking there's something about this movie. It's the length of it. And there's something about seventies pacing and almost the fact that there's not all these character beats, you know, like if you're watching a movie and it's like, Oh, I know I've got to go through this character beat. I got to rewatch or art, something yeah. you've seen a bunch of times. It's almost yeah. nice to take away. There's no plot. It's just put the parasite in the high rise, watch it go. There's no character. Yeah. So you don't really have to like uh, follow along with all these character beats beats so there's something about it that's very rewatchable to me that i think makes me enjoy the movie for more than the what it's worth uh two gun down there in the no, chat saying his first time watching me actually enjoyed it for what it was especially for a first film and he is giving it a b because he knows how we do it over here on blood splatter chatter we do the letter grade so fable. i almost gave it some stars so i'm glad <laughs> fable drop it on me man what, what's your letter grade my friend uh, it was it was an okay first effort. Um, as a Cronenberg fan, I see a lot of seeds of what's going to come from him in this movie. So as a nerd of that, you know, it has some merit for me personally. Um, but is it a a great film? Is it you know what I mean? Is it something that I would say, hey guys, you got to see this movie? Right. Unless you're a Cronenberg fan, probably not. Um. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say C, man. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Where are you at on it, Link? Ooh, that's uh, that was... I'll give it one, one up, Fable C plus. Um, and you know, like I said, I think it's a fine first film. It's a uh. The word I'm looking for. So very, it's competent enough, you know, especially for things of that era that we've seen. Blood sucking freaks, and even though they're not the same type of movie, <laughs> but well, this is better than that. Well, no, let, oh, yeah. let me just say, like, part of me was like, you know, like, oh, okay, like I'm trying to like, I want to pick some films that are going to be entertaining for people to watch, and they're going to be happy that they watched it. I'm like, oh, these guys are going to enjoy just being able to go back for the the academic nature of it to go back and yeah. watch Cronenberg's <laughs> first film. I'm like, eh, it's a little oh, yeah. dated. And then we watched uh, whatever the fuck we watched last week. And I was like, who gives a shit? They'll be fine. Street trash. Yeah. What the fuck yeah. am I tripping about? These guys will watch anything. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly. You know, that's right. It's a fire, especially some of the stuff we've seen. But, um, there, there's a solid idea there. Like I said, this is a, one is ripe for a remake. The and I commend it for that. So I, you know, see, I can. I'll probably watch it myself again one day. I don't know if I will do multiple watches, but I can see myself giving this another another shake. I think it's. I, I think, think it's up. worth it because the lack of any character that you can latch onto. The more the, I, I heard somebody say this a long time, long time ago, and I find it super fucking true. The first time you watch a movie, you're more focused on plot, and right uh, yep. watches after that, you pick up more on characters. And with this movie being so dry on character, like it's not like I'm not going to say, "Oh, watch it again," and the characters are great. That's not the case at all. But you are <laughs> you're going to grow more attached to the characters. I relate it to Dawn of the Dead, which I think is a it's a movie that a lot of people's favorite fucking best fucking horror movie of all time. But to me, it's like there's not any good characters in that movie, but it's a two hour and some minute movie. So by the end of that movie, you've been with these characters so long, you at least like feel for like you, you know them. And I guess for right. me, mm -hmm. I've fucking spent so much time in the Starliner <laughs> high rise over the past couple of months. <laughs> I'm way more attached to these characters right. than, than most people would be by watching 
the movie ones. But uh, okay. what what did you did you give your letter grade? C C plus and a C. We've got a uh, Bobby gave it a four shivers, which would be a B plus for him. And Two Gun gave it a B. I'm right there with Bobby, dude. I was fucking debating last night on giving this cocksucker an A, just because it's like, <laughs> like, I finished the movie and once again, like I like I say this about like Halloween and movies like that. Well, like I can watch it over and over and over. By the end of it, every time I'm like, oh my god, like it's just so good. And by the end of this movie, every time I watch it, I'm like, damn, that's a good fucking movie. <laughs> like I'm telling you, like. Uh, I don't know. There, there's a reason why I think it's. Oh, it's what, hot. what are you gonna give the fly? Hmm. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. wonder. I will say <laughs> that's a good point. We, again, we do have. We're talking the fly this Saturday on Dylan's show. I just watched because we've got this. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen DHS, but we've got this guy on this fucking channel, and his name is Scarpad, and he's always gonna say things like. The fly, well, the 1958 one was better. And if you don't snub <laughs> Vincent Price's cock, then fuck you. Stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, so I watched The Fly today, the original, just because I want to have, I want to be able to fucking uh, reply when Scarpad is saying that on Saturday's show. So I did the homework. And, <laughs> and I went, have you guys, I, mean, I know we're getting way out of ourselves. I'm just real curious, real quick. Have you guys seen the original fly too? It's worth a watch. It, it was fun and I enjoyed it, but it's not the fly from the eighties. It's it's no. not that movie, dude. But all right, so yeah, we got the thing and the other one's a film film. I've yet to see the because I'm gonna ask Scarpad that too on Saturday. Is he gonna lie through his teeth and say that he likes the the original <laughs> thing more than Carpenter's? He, he likes oh, Beer Ground better than uh, Terminator. So lying, lying motherfucker. Oh god damn it! We said burial ground. I was trying to get through the whole. Now I can share uh, what two pad or <laughs> fucking two pad. What two gun <laughs> said bad. earlier. This is better than burial ground. Yeah, I was going to avoid it. I'm like, oh, let's yeah. just go one show without fucking doing that. <laughs> but all right, man, you guys are the shit. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up right here. I give it a B plus. Fable gives it a C. Link gives it a C plus. Uh, I really appreciate you guys checking this movie out. I'm glad that you guys have both checked this one off the list. It's good to. It's good to knock out these first films, with which brings me to something I just wanted to drop for anyone still here, if you're in the chat or watching on the rewind. It's another reason why I wanted to do this movie when I did it is because I, I, I'm i an OCD type of guy. Like, I right. want to start at the beginning of shit. You guys know my idea for a larger horror show that I would like to do, starting at the fucking beginning and working your way up to today. I don't know if that's feasible, but as, as many ways to do that, I'm going to try to do a lot of these like masters of horror. I'm going to like, like pretty much call this the first of the, the masters of horror first movie series. I'm going to put this on a playlist where we're going to do Sam Raimi's first film. We're going to do John Carpenter's first film, Wes Craven's first film and start just kind of starting there. Like before I talk yeah. about Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm going to talk about Last House on the left so that there's there's a base to kind of like begin with. And then with these big master horrors, I'm going to work my way through their career. Kind of like that. Like not, not try not to jump around just to to tell a narrative, if you will. So uh, like this, this is the beginning of that, man. I'm pretty, pretty stoked to do it. What do you guys got coming up, man? Link, I know you just did a show with He Who Shall Not Be Named over yes. on He Who Shall Not Be Named's domain. Link and He Who <laughs> Shall Not Be Named a- got issues. <laughs> You guys have a great uh, relationship. Yeah. We, you guys, the show is great, knows. man. Dude, if you're into comics, go check it out on Scarpad's domain. Scarpad and Link got issues, or Link and Scarpad got issues. It's a lot of fun, man. I haven't been reading these, but I've still been watching the episodes and, and having you. fun with it. So go jump on it. We, we made a um quick decision. We made a decision to uh we're gonna find more divisive books so we right. can get that rapport everyone loves so much we keep picking classics <laughs> right what about you fable man what do you got going on i know you just had your, your biggest show of the instagram channel with a uh, comic tom well actually that was two weeks ago now. i was thinking that was last yeah. week what do you got so going on though. what's coming up man um i don't know if i have anything coming this weekend um uh you know work is wreaking havoc on that schedule um but you know we just had carry on uh officially unofficial geek that was a great show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to a bunch of stuff. So you catch the rewind on that. Um, man, just really Dylan's horror show this Saturday, that's for sure. Because um, uh, of course, it's Father's Day weekend, and, and, and it's also my birthday at the same time. So 
I'm gonna be a little busy, so I don't know if I'm gonna really have a show. But I'm trying to plan something with um, uh, Sheena and Inja. They just oh, started shit. something called uh, Anime Melanin and Anime or some something like that. I don't know. What they, <laughs> I love it. What they called it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a great title. I just can't remember it right now. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to plan a show with them. So if anything, that's probably what's coming up. Nope. Oh yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, awesome, man. Dude, that yeah, that's awesome. The link to uh links and Fable's Instagram pages and YouTube channel for uh for Fable down in the description below. So make sure you're checking those out. Again, check out Dylan's show this Saturday. We got Scarpad's domain, always doing fun stuff. Robbie over on Pop Culture Philosophers. Again, I need to look and see what this guy is actually doing instead of just saying he's always doing fun stuff. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing Monday. I don't know if either of you do, but I do not. Um, say thank you to the chat for coming in. You guys are the That's shit right. as always. We got Bobby De La Ghetto, Two Gun Pew to the motherfucking Pew up in this bitch. He who shall not not be names domain was up <laughs> in here. Chaos in comics in here talking about the Cerebros. Evan, Nick, Evan, you guys are awesome. James Phelps come in and hang out for a little bit. I appreciate the piss out of all you people. Everybody in. The Rewind, I super appreciate you guys as well. Make sure you're uh, throwing your comments, your grades down below. Have you seen Shivers? Did you like Shivers? Was it a good time? So that's it. We're going to wrap it up, and we'll see you this Saturday on Dylan's Horror Show. Thanks, everybody. Peace. I love to talk, film, discuss, to critique.